Welcome, everyone. Um, this is the first annual meeting of the Friends of the Callis Town Hall. At this meeting, we're, we will hear about who the Friends group are. Here's a hint, it's all of us, um, about what we're doing and what we hope to do in the future. In some ways, this meeting is the kickoff for phase three of restoring the Callis Town Hall. Um, bear with me, I'll give a little bit of history here for the record. Uh, the first phase of restoring the town hall began seven and a half years ago at town meeting of March 5th, 2013. At that meeting, we voted to pay for a much needed new roof for the building. Between town meeting of 2013 and 2018, many dedicated people led by David Sheets and Donna Fitch worked on the engineering studies, the community engagement, and perhaps more important of all, finding an architect. That architect turned out to be John McCullough. At the town meeting of 2018, the town voted unanimously for $200,000 toward the restoration of the town hall. At that point, the total cost for the project was projected to be around 400,000. So after that town meeting, we began worrying about how to raise the rest from a complicated federal grants and through major big deal fundraising. But then, wonderful happened. On June 28th, 2018, Donna announced that an anonymous donor had given $200,000. Wow. That donation assured the completion of phase two. We now have a beautifully restored working space downstairs for town business. We'll hear a little bit later about the amazing work, call it magic, that completed phase two. We'll also hear about our hopes for phase three, which focuses on the upstairs. Uh, as Cliff mentioned, we've set an ambitious agenda for the next 50 minutes. We've set aside time, time at the end for questions. So please hold your questions until then, enjoy the meeting. And now I give you the one, the only David Sheets, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Scott. Um, <laughs> quite an intro. Um, so I, I've been given plenty of time here, but I don't think I'm going to need all of it because Scott did such a wonderful job of laying the groundwork for all of us understanding the work that's been going on at the town hall for a surprising amount of time. And yet the actual construction has not been uh, all that long. And happily, but somewhat unhappily, we have a beautiful building again, but one that the public cannot quite yet enjoy. But it is the public very much particularly the citizens of Callis that take ownership and always have been owners of this structure to some extent. And it is, that is basically what the friends group hopes to be. The, the group that takes the project from here uh, to the future and any good friends group um, of which there are many, and I'm sure that many of you are members of such organizations. Um, the, the local library, they, they're countless, including the State House itself, which has a very robust friends organization that um, continues to raise money for the purpose of uh, developing and enhancing our ability to serve as a museum to the public. Well, in the case of the town hall, it's much more practical than just being a museum. This is a structure that we have talked about for quite a few years that has been underutilized for nearly a century. Ever since the Christian church gave it up at the end of the 19th century, and it became nothing but the town hall from that 
point on in its to both both floors. Um, but in recent years, it's been used for little more than town meeting and some meetings downstairs. Happily, now that the renovation has occurred, the building is on a very firm foundation with a great roof on top and uh, quite a bit of loving care uh, on the inside, uh, particularly downstairs. But if we want the space to be utilized more fully, we have to develop the upstairs as well. And that is kind of where the renovation of the town hall has uh, come to a conclusion so far. We need more money. The friends group is possibly uh, the means to try to get more money on a project by project basis in a reasonable amount of time and over the course of being driven by such things as um, uh, will make it a performing space um, on the upstairs. So we're going to talk a lot about that today at the annual meeting, the hopes of you, the citizens of Callis, and how we can uh, make this place, once the pandemic is passed, a vibrant uh, gathering space within our town. Sound good? <laughs> Great, thank you, David. Thank you. Okay, I've been uh, asked to speak a little bit about the uh, role of the Friends Group and the role of the Select Board in this uh, new arrangement. So as everyone knows, the town owns the building and the Select Board is responsible to meet the wishes of the community in taking care of the building and maintaining it. The Friends Organization is a nonprofit corporation, a 501c3, that was organized to help manage the process of taking care of the building. And also, as David mentioned, to engage cultural events at the space, primarily in the upstairs. Uh, the hope is, is that through some of these events, they can serve as fundraisers that will provide additional monies for the care and maintenance of the building. There will also be other requirements as there is with any structure over time to help keep it up. And got another member joining us, excuse me. And that will allow us to keep this a thriving, uh, important part of our community, the heart of our community, if you will. Um, the select board, of course, will be responsible every year for setting a budget and putting some money into the budget that uh, is there to help take care of the building, but the friends will augment that through their efforts. Okay, um, and once again, um, just a little housekeeping here for people who have recently joined us. Everyone comes into the meeting, they're automatically on mute if they want to ask a question, there will be opportunities later in the program for a Q&A. But if you need to say something, you'll have to unmute yourself. You can do that either by pressing and holding the space bar, or you can scroll down to the lower left-hand corner of your screen and hit the unmute button. All right, so next on our agenda, we want to uh, nominate some board members going forward. And we have some current board members who have agreed to run again for the board of directors. I'm going to um, handle this in three phases. First, I will present two slates. Um, the first slate are current board members who have um, volunteered to serve on the board again. I will ask for someone to nominate the entire slate. This first slate are people who will be running for a one-year term. The second slate will be board members running for two-year terms. Now, per the, um, per the board's, I'm losing the word here, our organization's 
bylaws. Bylaws. Thank you, David. Our bylaws state that the board member's position is a two-year role. But we realized if we started off by having everyone at a two-year role, then everyone would have to be reelected every two years and we'd lose some consistency. So half of the current board volunteered to serve a one-year term and the other half volunteered to serve a two-year term so that we could have a staggered board and going forward, it will be a um, two-year period for everyone who's serving. So I will present the two slates and then in the third phase, I will open up the floor and take nominations for other people who might be interested in serving on the board. And there's a lot of work to do. So we're hoping that some people from the community will join us and volunteer. Okay, so for the first um, slate running for one year term, the volunteers are Scott Bassage, Barbara Butler, David Sheets and Artie Toulis. So I'm wondering if someone would like to nominate this slate of candidates. Anyone? Moved. <laughs> okay, thank you, Denise. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All right. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to present a poll. It will pop up on your screen. You will have the opportunity to vote by simply clicking next to the names of the candidates. And um, as I said, after this slate, I'll present a second slate. And then in the third phase, I will open the floor up to nominations. So this is all kind of new to me, so bear with me. Okay, I've launched the poll. Hopefully everyone can see it. Uh, now I'm on the uh, Zoom. I'm seeing some votes coming in. If you do not see the, if you do not see the, the poll on your screen, we will provide you with an option, opportunity to vote via chat. I'm gonna keep this open for about another 20 seconds. Looks like most of you have been able to vote. I'm still seeing three missing. Scott, unfortunately as host and co-host, you and I are not able to vote, but we will vote via chat so that our we're counted. So apparently there are is one other attendee who has not been able to vote. Can you please speak up if you're not seeing the ballot on your screen? Yeah, I see the ballot, but I'm not a resident of Calus, so I don't think I would be eligible to vote. Okay. Um, um, I, I'm sorry, I got a phone call while, <laughs> while you were giving instructions. Should I just click on submit? Yes, once you're, you're done voting, you hit submit. Okay, and I just um, also need to, oh, so I check each one? Yes. Okay. So the bylaws do say that the Friends Group is open to residents and non-residents of Calus. Yeah. So non-residents are welcome to vote as well. Can we get a second ballot so Tina can, can vote? Unfortunately, we can only have one ballot per internet all connection. Right. Can, can I just put a chat in the chat that I'm voting for all of them? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay. okay. Can you write that in? Cliff? Yes. Cliff? Yes? I would like to encourage Ron Padgett to vote. Even though he's a non callous resident, he's certainly a member of our community. And I, I invite him and encourage him to vote. Absolutely. And the bylaws do allow for that. Uh, this is Ron Padgett. Thank you. Uh, but I've already taken the ballot off of my screen and it looks like a shoe in uh, slate. <laughs> anyway, so I, okay. If you do want to submit your vote by chat, you, you're welcome to do so. I, I'm too scared to, to use chat. Okay. <laughs> so Cliff, did those 
what are the positions those people are running for? Uh, that's decided at the first meeting after the annual meeting where the newly recognized board of directors will okay. vote to assign specific positions, president, vice president, treasurer, et cetera. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and I will present the preliminary results. These won't be the final results because they won't include the people yeah, who so weren't able to okay. vote yeah. via the ballot. And there are the results as was mentioned. It looks like it's a shoe in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations, <Thank> everyone. <laughs> Congratulations, wow. indeed. And yeah, thank you yeah, for stepping up. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing these results and. Bear with me, I had an interruption in my connection. I apologize for that. Okay, so next we will go to the second slate of candidates. We're running for a two year period. And the candidates on that ballot are Chris Colt, Cliff Emmons, and Nancy Toulis. Do I hear a nomination for this slate? So moved. Thank you, Denise. Is there a second? Second. Craig, it looked like you had your hand up. Did you have a question? Okay. It was just right. to nominate. Uh, okay. So after this slate, then I will open the floor up for nominees from the floor. Cliff? Yes. I have a question. Okay. I, I didn't see who seconded, and I, I'm taking notes. Who seconded that, that nomination? I didn't catch who seconded. Was the it was me. It was me, Jane English. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. And thank you, Barbara, for taking the minutes here. It's difficult because you're having to do it by phone and by <laughs> the visual. All right. I'm going to bring up the next uh, slate. Afford everybody an opportunity to vote. And you should all be able to see it now. Results, results are coming in like rapid fire. <laughs> Can we do this on the presidential? Yeah. We'll get the town to nominate who, who they want to have on the ballot. <laughs> vote early and vote often. Exactly. That's right. Okay, and thank you, Christina, for your chat vote. Scott, I believe uh, you wanted to support all three candidates as well. So I will record that. I will keep this open for another 15 seconds or so. Looks like everyone who can has voted. And I will end the poll. And here are the results. So once again, congratulations. Okay, so I will now Take the results off the screen. These are preliminary results because they do not include those who voted via chat. After the meeting, we will publish the full results for all to see along with the minutes and whatnot. Okay. At this point now, I would like to open up for nominations from the floor. Are there any nominees? or anyone you would like to nominate. We are asking for a two-year commitment, but as a one-time only, because it's a newly formed board, we are allowing people to, if they're interested in being on the board, to serve a one-year term. One-time only offer though, folks, so. I have, a, I have a question. Yes, Craig. 
how many board members are there total? I tuned in late to the start of the meeting, so I'm just curious, how, how many will, will there be? There are currently, we have elected uh, seven members to the board. The bylaws state that the board must consist of at minimum of five members, but we do not have a maximum because we want to encourage as many people as are interested to participate. Barbara? Yes, and I want to be sure people know that we love self-nominations. Don't wait for someone to nominate you. You are welcome to nominate yourself. So, are you, so is a board member different than just being part of the group? Yes, the board members will, will meet regularly uh, to discuss any issues at hand and also to help uh, provide a mechanism for steering the um, cultural events that occur at the town hall, also to inform the select board of the goings on and as well as the members of the Friends of Town Hall at large as to upcoming events and ongoing activities. I would add that the board, board members are the governing body of the friends group, but simply by attending today, you're all members of the friends group already. So how often does this board meet? The bylaws state that we meet a minimum of four times a year. Uh, currently we're meeting twice a month. And the, the, the current date, the dates that we meet are the second and fourth Thursday of every month at 10 o'clock. It, it sounds like there's fundraising to do. do you, I, I missed the first couple minutes. Do you have a goal for fundraising? We and do. David, right? maybe you could respond to that question. We, we have a goal, but I would say in the midst of the pandemic, we have not really started the conversation of how aggressively we go out there and continue to raise money for town hall. I think that's one of the first conversations we're going to need to have is um, to identify what we feel we're going to need as soon as the building is uh, start starts its useful life again, um, and what we can put off a little longer. So that's that's part of why it may be a good idea for some of you to be involved, um, and there may be ways for you to be involved. Every friends group works on the basis of trying to include as many people as possible. So I would submit that if it puts you off to meet twice a month, um, that may not continue necessarily. We'll be having conversations about what makes the most sense. And probably we're gonna form a few committees. That's what usually happens. And people might even be able to participate in a committee that would not necessarily have to meet with the frequency of the board itself. So there are options for being participants without necessarily being on the board. I'd like to nominate Carol Beatty. Okay, I hear a nomination. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. And that took me by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you a nomination, Carol? I mean, Linda, Carol. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of, you know, I right, right now. Right now, I think I could do it. The timing Thursday morning Join the meeting is problematic, but but for right now, I think I actually could, and I am interested. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Cliff? Yes. Um, I'd like to follow up on David's comment about uh, in the future we might have committees formed. And if we, if and when we do that, I'm sure we'll be sending out email notification to all of the mem friends members 
so everybody here today would have the opportunity to volunteer for, let's say, a fundraising committee or a furnishings committee or, a, you know, some other kind of committee that we might form in the future. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, good point. All right, I'm not hearing any further nominations. I can create another poll, uh, but since we only have one other nominee, I think we can simply do it by a raise of hands. So if you would like to support Carol's candidacy, please signify by raising your hand. It's unanimous. <laughs> Welcome, Carol, thank you. And just so everyone knows right now, it looks like we have approximately 23 participants, not counting Scott and myself. So that brings us actually to 25. So uh, sorry, I, I just want to say, uh, I have to go. I've got a medical appointment in town, um, but I'm wondering, are there, is there gonna be a summary of this meeting posted somewhere just so I can see what else was discussed after I leave? The meeting is being recorded um, by the Zoom account and it's also being recorded by Orca Media. It will be published to YouTube. It will also be published to the town website as well as the virtual tour, which we're going to be presenting in just a few minutes. Also, we will publish the results of the votes and the minutes of the meeting on the website as well. Thanks, Craig. Okay, I am going to go ahead and close the nomination and election process and move into the next phase of the meeting. Uh, before we do that, briefly, are there any other questions regarding the board of directors? I'm hearing none. Okay. Those of you who are only able to participate by phone, unfortunately will not be able to see the video, but you will be able to view the video after the fact once we've posted it to the town's website. And uh, I believe um, Artie and Barbara are going to coordinate on that, but I would expect it to be posted probably by this evening. Is that doable, Barbara and Artie? Uh, it's doable, I do want to, I do want to put in a higher quality version um, on the website. The, the version you're going to see now is relatively low quality just to make it easy to, um, to pass around and share and view, uh, but I'll put a higher quality one on probably later tonight. That'll be on uh, Facebook and I will forward it to uh, whoever puts it on the website. So by late tonight or early tomorrow, you'll see the higher quality version, but it's the same video, just a better quality. Great. Thanks, Artie. And like I say, if you can send it to Barbara, she'll take care of getting it onto the website. Great. So uh, without further ado, I am going to sh do a screen share here and kick off the virtual tour of the town hall. I hope everyone enjoys. I would ask everyone to make sure that their microphone is muted while the video is playing. That will help avoid uh, issues with sound quality. Town meeting in 2018, we had developed a, a plan for how to renovate the building, and we went to the voters in Callis. They gave us $200,000. With that money, we, we got a, a matching donation, a very generous donation. of that year, we lifted the building up off its old foundation, demoed that foundation, built a new one, pulled the building back away from the road, and put it back down. That, uh, that winter, the winter of 2018-2019, uh, um, 
the carpenters are in there working. And uh, in the summer of 2019, they were doing the exterior. And it was probably the spring of 2020 that we, we finally finished it. We, Labor and Industry came through and gave us our certificate of occupancy. And now the town has a, uh, a renovated town hall uh, ready for meetings. Unfortunately, with the COVID, that's not going to happen for a while. But here it is. I really I, I appreciated the opportunity of giving something to the town. I, this uh, is probably my my one shot, my one big shot, and I, I, I wanted to contribute, and, and I had an opportunity to do so with the work I did here. The kitchen has been renovated, new stove, new refrigerator, new kitchen all around. The, uh, the main meeting place in the lower level is almost exactly as it was. We've done some things to sort of that show a little more respect for the existing building. For example, the, the columns that are that are right up here at the serving counter, that are no longer engaged by the serving counter. They're completely independent. The serving counter goes around them and respects the column placement. We also made the, uh, the convenience stair in the corner, the old corner stairway. We made that enclosure smaller, so it was uh, didn't take up as so much room in here, and also, all doors are on magnetic hold opens, so we can keep these doors open and so people can admire some of the historic pieces without having a, a door closed on them for fire code reasons. Uh, the building is, uh, we, like I said, we, did, we got a certificate of occupancy. It's, uh, we don't have a sprinkler system, but we have plenty of fire alarms, smoke detectors, uh, automatic closers on the doors. If you want to take a look around, uh, it has its own mechanical room. It has two bathrooms, one ADA compliant. It has a new lift, pretty cool. The lift actually goes up, it has three stops, this level, the ground level, the second story level, and it goes up to the stage level with another door on its side. So a person with a mobility problem can get all the way to the stage um, in a wheelchair and address an audience. Um, so that's kind of nice. We got a grant from the someone, Arts Council, uh, Vermont Council for the Arts for that. Um, the windows have been redone by Jamie Weiner. Um, Bill Davis and Toby Talbot and I did most of the interior painting, all the interior painting. Um, I did the floors. Friends and citizens of Callis, welcome to the Callis Town Hall, the renovated Callis Town Hall. I'm glad you could join us. Wonderful. Thank you, Artie and Nancy and John for putting that together. Well done. Thank yep. you. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I don't want to interrupt too much, but following that, I just wonder if Donna could highlight a few of the things that you saw in the video that weren't necessarily um, mentioned such as the counter and the woodwork in the kitchen, all of which were made from the reclaimed parts of the doors of the old pews that were once upstairs. Um, and Donna, are there other things that you could call out in terms of contributions uh, 
that people made to make this happen? I made a very long list of everybody who contributed and it's now hanging in the, the town hall. So when people go and vote, they'll see this very long list that starts at the ceiling and goes down. Um, and I know John mentioned a lot of these people in the video, but the video couldn't be that long. Right. Um, uh, Sandy Hyde, who lives on Apple Hill. I mean, he was there all winter with John, day after day after day. Um, Rob Chase donated that beautiful cherry countertop in the kitchen. Um, and there's just so many people to thank. Yeah. And especially people who stepped up after Ernie died. Right. And, um, and I just want to say to Artie and Nancy, one of John's, um, one of my sisters-in-law in, in California said that the, the video was PBS quality. So thank you so much for doing that and, and giving John the opportunity to share, um, you know, with his family in California. That's all I want to say, David. All right. All <laughs> okay. right. But that Thanks. was wonderful. In other words, um, I get downright emotional when I think about all of the people who have made this possible. And uh, happily, when the building is open to the public again, we will have their names in the building, um, calling them out for their contributions and the contributions to come. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to uh, inform everyone that the, the restoration is not fully completed because we are currently working on getting the exterior painted. Um, we did contract with Grady Thayer, Grady Thayer Painting, and he and his team are aggressively working towards completing the project. We had hoped that they would be able to have it done by the end of the month, but um, the weather has not always cooperated but they are making great progress. And I encourage everyone to take a drive by and see how it's coming along because the parts that are completed are just stunning. Okay. We'll move to the next item on our agenda and um, the Gospel Hollow players would like to talk a little bit about their ideas for the hall. Um, I don't know who wants to start off, Artie. Or yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll speak for the group. Um, so yeah, I mean, as, as most of you probably know, our, our home at the Blue Barn is, is no more. Um, so we're looking to use the town hall as our, our new space to do our performances. Um, I believe, um, well, a lot of you probably already know we did, uh, Chris is mad as the wind and sea, uh, was it last year? Or I get confused year before. Um, and that's the type of thing we want to do, you know, all the shows that we, uh, we're used to doing at the barn. We're now going to move over to the town hall. Uh, I think Chris actually maybe has two, is it two in the can already, Chris, that are, are ready to get out there as soon as we can get into the space. Um, we had hoped, I mean, you know, we had hoped that we would be in there this, uh, this summer and doing things, but unfortunately the circumstances uh, that wouldn't prevent that. Um, but as soon as, as uh, it's deemed safe and we can go there, uh, we plan on doing at least probably two shows a summer season, if not more. Um, we'll be putting on lots of music events, um, which I feel will be easy to book once the time has is, is come because musicians right now are just dying to play. And as soon as that uh, the gates are open for them to do that, there will be lots of opportunities. Uh, so we foresee um, that happening quite a lot, um, you know, down the road. And I think this will probably come in later when we look at the two and five year plan. Uh, the space will also be used for uh, being able to be rented by other groups um, for events, parties, weddings, birthdays, whatever. Um, so we see eventually the town hall becoming a, a money generator. Um, there will be lots of fundraising needed for the for the upstairs space. Um, you know, most of the phase one and phase two is complete, and a lot of the donations went towards that, which leaves us uh, fundraising for the future for the upstairs. We're going to need lighting equipment. We're going to need um, technical equipment, sound equipment, stuff like that. Um, we don't really want to do our shows with extension cords running around, which is sort of what got us in trouble at the Blue Barn. Uh, so we're going to try to prevent that by installing some some pretty good professional equipment upstairs to have some good um, to get plays up there. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I want to thank the, the town, uh, the friends group. There's been a tremendous amount of meetings and time spent uh, getting the documents ready, getting the agreement with the town ready, <clears throat> um, putting together the processes for how the building will get rented. Um, things like that. Uh, we've used Plainfield as kind of a template for what we've done, but there's specifics to, to our particular building that are different that we had to work around. And unfortunately with COVID right now, everything's on hold, but uh, we see the building getting used um, by us, by the town hall players quite a lot. Um, if there's any questions, uh, I'll take them. Hearing none, I think you must have preempted uh, any questions with your presentation. Thank you, Artie. And I do, with the video, I do apologize that we weren't able to get, you know, within a short period. I know there's many, many, many people to thank um, who put in a ton of time and we weren't able to capture all that on a, on a four minute video, but uh, I think uh, there are a lot of people that were involved that need to be thanked. Absolutely. Do the window do the windows open wide so that you know ventilation for you know with COVID maybe we'll get a head start on things? Yes, the windows can be opened. Um, there they are subject to um, seasonal changes, so there are adjustable slats on the side to be able to open them up um, when the need arises. When we just had the uh, primary election, we actually opened a few of them so that we would have airflow through the building. Uh, come November, we may not want to engage in that option for obvious reasons, but if it's a nice day out, we'll certainly have them open. Any other questions? Has the board um, done any specific work about parameters for events or cost or any, uh, any kind of guidelines there, or are you just at the very beginning of that process? Artie, maybe you could talk a little bit about the agreements. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty specific, actually. There's a, a cost um, schedule uh, that we feel is is very fair, uh, but also will help the town, you know, generate some money and not just have the town hall be a drain on the on the town. Um, there's specific guidelines for number of people, hours it can be open, um, whether or not the kitchen is being used or not. Uh, there's you know time guidelines on how long the events can last, how late music can go. It's, it's pretty thorough and specific. Um, uh, it's not 100% complete yet. Uh, I don't know, Cliff, if we can, if those things will get posted eventually. But uh, yeah, a fair amount of time and effort went into those things and it's, it's pretty specific. Yes, it, it will definitely be posted. Um, Artie, didn't we build in um, a bit of a discount for residents who might want to use the hall? We did, yeah. So we're, we're, I don't know if we came up with exact final numbers, but we were going to have a, a different cost, whether uh, callous, whether they were callous residents or not. But I feel like, you know, just having been around and, and looking at venues and other places for parties that, you know, Nancy and I have hosted or had or whatever my band played, um, I feel like the rates are very, very reasonable um, for anyone that would want to use it. Um, but also a way to, to make a little money and, and cover some of the costs of what we're doing. Thanks, Artie. Any other questions? Hearing none. Um, so Artie talked a little bit about um, the plans of the Gospel Hall of Players, as well as some of the long-term plans for entertainment events that would take place at the hall. Um, Scott, would you like to please speak a little bit about short-term plans? Sure. Um, we're in, in the, the very short term, we'll be working on a budget with Artie and Nancy's help to, uh, to, to decide what, what we want to look for in the way of equipment, um, sound, in, including sound, uh, enhanced sound for hard of hearing, um, lights, uh, I think everybody would welcome the idea of some comfortable chairs up in up in that space. Um, I know at the moment that um, the Vermont Arts Council will be able or the Preservation Trust of Vermont is standing by to give us a small grant for some 
engineering and technical assistance to help us develop that budget. And we are now eligible for a second grant from Vermont's Out, Vermont Arts Council to actually obtain the equipment. Um, but that the, those grants won't cover everything. So we certainly will also begin, um, need to begin a, a serious fundraising operation. And we'll do that probably simultaneously with grant writing and budget making. And that's really all I see for the, for the short term. I'm curious, has any thought been given to um, using the walls of the upstairs space for a visual art? For painting certainly, and yep. drawings and... Well, not, certainly, certainly a possibility, yep. David, you might have some ideas and suggestions already. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the upstairs um, has big, beautiful windows um, that would be the only problem with uh, much wall space. The, the wall space is surprisingly limited upstairs, but certainly I think we could possibly in the future put up some kind of hanging system that would enable us to uh, show art and rotate art um, with relative ease, something like that. Uh, this is Donna, and as part of our Arts Council grant application, we did say that we would be doing art shows in that upper space. I think the idea of rotating is a great one, David. I have a question. Um, the Fall Foliage Festival is coming up. Is the building gonna be open? at all, maybe a one way in, one way out, so people can take a look around? I don't know that uh, we've discussed that possibility with Jamie. Uh, I don't know if Jamie has approached anyone asking if that was gonna be included. Certainly something that the board could uh, take up at their next meeting after this one. Um, David, Scott, anyone else have any other comments on with regards to that question? Um, if the select board chair um, thinks it's possible, uh, we certainly could figure it out, I'm sure, and be safe. I think it would be wonderful to allow uh, residents to go in and go out uh, to take a, an actual look at the, at the place, but... Uh, um, I mean, I think I could put yeah. it on the agenda for Monday night for the board to to discuss. I mean, if we had a a safe way for people to maybe go in and go out, you know, you can't spend a lot of time there. You can't stand around inside talking. There'd have to be some kind of, you know, people kind of there shooing people along. But I don't wouldn't hurt for the board to talk about it and see what we decide. Yeah. No, I, I think, go ahead, David. I mean, I love the idea if we think it's practical and and doable, sure. Yeah, I think if the select board uh, decides to support this, then the board of directors can meet to discuss yeah. how to pull it off. And, maintain and I'll, put it, I'll put it on for Monday night under the town hall, friends of town hall update. Great. Um, Jamie's, Jamie's not here, I don't think, but she's doing the flyer for the weekend. I think, and, I think and it's too late. No, not yet, because no. I've delayed it because I, we're trying to work out something for Friday night. But no. if there's something just brief saying that there's a tour going on in that building, it seems to me very possible to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, if we could put it in early, and that would be like today. Um, just saying that there's an open house and then if this the select board feels as though there's a possibility or, or it is a good possibility that it would, could happen, that would be great to be able to put in a flyer. Great. I totally agree. Thank you for delaying it, Hasso. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Jamie appreciates it, but whatever. <laughs> It, it, Hasso, did I understand, this is Barbara, did I understand you to say today would need to be the day to contact Jamie and let her know? 
Yeah, because I think she wants to be able to print it today. She put it off a day or so for me. So yeah, we're scrambling to try and get our listing today. Denise, would you have time after this meeting to contact Jamie and give her a heads up? Sure. Thank you. Okay, well, we are fielding questions. This is actually a perfect segue into the general Q&A section of our <laughs> meeting. So I'm opening the floor for any other questions people might have. And I have a question, Cliff, and that is how does one become a member? Well, the easiest way is to attend this meeting, but the other <laughs> alternative is to, we have a Facebook page. Um, you can contact any member of the board and say, I'd like to become a member. We will also periodically be sending out things via front porch form and whatnot to remind people that we're always actively seeking members and it's free. Oh, it's free. You're not going to have a, a cost. No, we talked about that and we thought that it would be better for fundraising efforts to separate that from participation in the friends group. Because Good for people you. can contribute in a lot of other ways besides just monetarily. And we wanted it to be as open um, and active a group as possible. So by not having membership fees, we thought we could accomplish that goal easier. The, the other options, the other options um, in addition to contacting any member of this board, if you tell any select board member, if you call the Callis Town Office, uh, we, uh, the Friends also has an email account. It's easy to remember, friends of the Callis Town Hall at gmail.com. Tell anybody, we'll add you to the list. Thank you, Barbara. Donna, did you have a follow-up question? Would the members have um, voting rights in some situations? Uh, certainly, there will always be an annual meeting for the board of directors. And of course, members of the friends group will have the opportunity to vote for the board directors. I could imagine there are other initiatives that may come up from time to time where we would want to engage with the friends group and get their inputs. And so we would take a vote. Can anybody attend the um, board of directors meetings? Absolutely. Are they open to the public? Absolutely. Right. They don't even have to be a friend, but if you do attend, you automatically become a friend. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so welcome, Rod. I, I would You're like to clarify, we're not an official committee of the town. We're not a committee or a commission of the town. So right. as a not-for-profit organization, we don't, post or warn our meetings. So if you're interested in attending a board meeting, you would just need to be in touch with us so we could give you the schedule. Don't post them or warn them. Are you gonna post your meetings on the Facebook page or something? Once we get it all up and running, that's the plan. Good, great. We have the Facebook page. We've got the start of a um, regular website. And um, as we move along, we'll formalize those a little bit more, and put more content onto them and whatnot. I, I, I'd like you to remember that there are some of us who do not belong to Facebook. So um, important information needs to be sent through email or some other way. But there are some people in the world, me especially, who do not belong to Facebook. Yes, and that's why we're, in addition to the Facebook page, we're also doing a website and uh, we will maintain the email addresses of the members of the Friends Group so that we can periodically send out information to them. And uh, we have a beautiful, as you may have noticed in the invitation, a beautiful new logo that was designed by Bob Hannon <laughs> for our group. Thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank Bob for us, Hasso. On Bob's behalf. He's not here. I'll let him know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Happy to do it. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? I'm Dorothy. Still got, there you go. Um, 
so the friends group and the board of making these plans to raise money and improve the building, which I think is great. But since the building is owned by the town, how does that, um, how does the select board be part of that? Shouldn't somebody from the select board be on this board? Um, I, I wanna know how the money thing, the responsible money things and things like that dovetail between the friends and the select board. Okay, um, I can answer most of that question and I would invite uh, David and Scott and any other members of the board to chime in as well. Um, my position on the select board as well is on the board for the friends group is by design so that I can act as the liaison between both bodies. And as we are scheduling events and activities at the hall, we have an agreement or soon to have an agreement with the select board that we will not be scheduling them on top of municipal events that take place at the hall. Those will always take priority over any other cultural events we might schedule. Uh, with regards to any monies that come in as a result of these activities, the board will have an appointed treasurer who will manage the funds and then periodically when need be, we will transfer funds over to the town or expend monies from the treasure, treasury fund to take on a project if we needed to do some touch up painting or something like that, for example, we may opt to take it directly out of the fund that's created by the Friends Group. Good. David or Scott, maybe, Scott, maybe you could add to that. I think that's pretty complete. Um, uh, we haven't, uh, not, we, we do have a, a uh, almost final draft of an agreement between the board the, the friends group in the town, in addition to a separate, a different um, draft of, a, of an agreement with uh, people use, who want to use the upstairs space. So there's two separate agreements and the, the uh, select board and the friends group are working on those together, just about finished. The draft management agreement is actually in front of the select board. Um, it was presented to them at the last select board meeting and we're hoping at this uh, coming meeting, this coming Monday, uh, that we will finalize and agree to sign off on it. So hopefully, did that answer your question, Dorothy? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, thank you. All right, uh, we're running a little over here so um if there's any more questions hearing none okay i'm going to turn the floor over to david for closing comments so i haven't really um come up with any little speech that can wrap this up but i do think that in this meeting today all of us have gotten a better sense, including myself, of what the future looks like for our town hall, which uh, belongs to everyone in Calus. And what I like about the definition of this group is that you may have noticed money is not an obstacle to being involved at the Calus town hall. Um, money is needed for the Callis Town Hall uh, and its future. Like any old building, it's going to have to be well maintained in the future. The great thing that we now have is a town hall whose deferred maintenance over decades has at long last been addressed. And we're at least starting with a solid building that while it may have needs that aren't currently there, um, we have a plan for going forward to address those needs. And we have most important of all, a magnificent edifice that we can start to use 
in a way that it has never been used before. So the excitement, unfortunately, is has to be kept a little at bay due to the pandemic. But I feel confident that somewhere in 2021, um, the doors are going to be flung open, not just for a very carefully attended open house, such as we might even have at Fall Foliage Festival, but flung open for a big Chris Colt written musical and many other wonderful events that will take place there in the years to come. We're in that position happily to, to do that as soon as the dangers of the pandemic are at bay. So thank you for coming today and being a part of the birth of the Friends of the Callous Town Hall. Um, and please spread the word uh, throughout the town and beyond uh, that this is a place for everybody and that everybody who tunes in or comes to one of our meetings or wants to help with the project, they're all friends of the Callous Town Hall. Thank you, David. And thank you all for being here and for being friends of the Callous Town Hall. I, I see your recording. When will the recording be available? Because I couldn't be at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. We will publish the recording to the website, but we also have Orca Media online and they are recording it and we publish it to YouTube on the Orca Media channel. Um, usually it takes a couple of days for us to get these things posted online. And there's a website for the Friends of Town of the Callis Town Hall. Is that the website you're talking about? Uh, Artie, can you respond to that one, please? Um, no, um, we started a, web a website back in January, February, March, but when the pandemic hit, we decided to forego that monthly fee of having to pay for a website because we knew it wasn't going to be doing us much good. So we let that expire. When we're talking about a website now, right now we're talking about the town website. There's a town hall page on the Callis Town website. That's where we'll be posting all the materials from today, the video and so forth. We will also be sending an email to each of you once that's all posted and available for viewing. Perfect. Thank you, Barbara. All right, all. Thanks again. And uh, we're moving forward with a new phase of our town hall. Well and done, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>